Digital FM. Online. This is 1101. Hi, I'm Eric, and welcome to 1101 FM, the best and only digital culture radio station at Georgia Tech. So today we're going to open our lines to discussion about instances when callers were tricked and taken advantage of over the internet. Now, internet deception is nothing new, but certainly something that's not going to disappear overnight. We'll break it down into two specific categories, deception with the intent of malice and deception with the intent of jest. Think of it like the difference between a simple joke and a real crime. Furthermore, we're going to explore the essential role internet deception plays in helping us become better critical thinkers through skepticism and scrutiny. So let's begin by defining a harmful type of deception, how it negatively affected one man's life, and how we learned from it. I'm here with famous linebacker Manti Teo to discuss his online naivety and how it compromised his personal life and tainted his professional career. So Manti, what exactly is catfishing? Catfishing is when someone online pretends to be a person that they're not. Catfish create fake profiles and lie about their identities, and they usually do so to get your personal information, money, or romance. In my case, I met this girl named Lene Kakua on the internet. She was gorgeous. She was everything to me. We dated for a few months, but everything went downhill when she died of leukemia. It was hard for me to deal with my girlfriend's death. I was just emotionally ruined, and I couldn't stop crying. But it gets worse. Lene was actually a gay man. The man behind the computer screen and that same man behind the phone was my girlfriend, Eric. That's messed up, man. I was shocked. I was speechless. But more than anything, I was embarrassed because I fell for it. That sounds awful, man. I am sorry. Trust me, Eric. If anything, catfishing is harmful. But I learned a lot from this experience, Eric, and I want to share it with the listeners. I want to let the listeners know that in life, if things are too good to be true, then they're probably not. I learned that the hard way, but I feel like after this experience, I learned to question things that doesn't seem right. The internet is a place where anyone can post anything anonymously. You should be more skeptical and scrutinizing on the internet because other people can make stuff up and you won't even know it. It makes you look stupid, and I don't want anyone else to go through what I went through. You gotta be a good critical thinker to avoid these scams, man. You gotta question validity before believing. Thank you, Manti. That's quite a story. As you can see, folks, Manti had to learn the hard way. He was not primed for the dangers of the internet. But there is hope for the rest of us. I have GT student Jen on the line, who will tell us a bit about how she is now prepared to face malicious deception head on. Hey, Eric. Recently, there was a fishing exercise at my school, which I admittedly fell for. Phishing is a scam by which an email user is duped into revealing personal information or confidential information, which a scammer can use illicitly. You've got mail. I received an email from GA Tech IT about a suspicious account access from a different country, and it said, please click here if you're not the one to avoid account termination. I clicked on the link only to find out that it was a phishing exercise done by the GT cybersecurity team and that I had failed it. It was helpful, though, in the fact that the link I clicked on directed me to a web page that taught me how to identify fake addresses and potentially malicious sites. It suggested that I should always hover my mouse over the hyperlink to check for unfamiliar websites before clicking. It was a good learning experience and helped me prepare myself, so I'm more skeptical of similar emails in the future. So what kinds of real malicious phishing threats has this prepared you for? One example I can think of is the Nigerian print scam. In this fraud, intended victims receive emails from someone who claims to be a Nigerian prince. The sender asks the recipient to help him transfer millions of dollars out of Nigeria in return for a portion of this large sum. Those that agree are tricked into revealing their bank account number, social security number, birth date, and other personal information. These victims later learn the truth the hard way, through empty bank accounts and stolen identities. Now that I've learned how to spot possible malicious links, and become more scrutinizing of such emails, future phishing emails are obvious to me. That's very interesting, Jen. So it seems to me as though a, a little harmless exercise has prepared you for the real deal. I don't think this is an isolated phenomenon either. I think that there are many instances of harmless deception we can use to improve our skepticism. I have internet studies expert Dr. Tan on the line to tell us more. Hey Eric, so yeah, as you said, there are a couple forms of deceptions that are relatively harmless. The one that comes up to mind is satirical articles. Satirical articles essentially help us prepare for actual malicious deceptions, especially to those who don't catch on to satire as quickly. 
Can you explain how satirical articles help us with future deceptions? So those who have a hard time noticing satire tend to be more easily persuaded by these fake informing news outlets. Scientists combine 20 tiny dogs into one reasonably sized dog. A can of Ready Whip is being audibly consumed in the next cubicle. Scientists discover the gene that makes you eat the whole goddamn bag of chips. But as they start to realize and pick up on satire, it can help them later on to detect actual forms of malicious deceptions, such as the ones mentioned earlier in the broadcast. There were a couple instances when actual news outlets picked up satirical articles and viewed them on air, but they were rather harmless. And ultimately, those news outlets learned from their experience. Can you talk a little bit about Rickrolling and Chainmail? Of course. So if you don't know what Rickrolling is, it's a misleading link that takes you to Rick Astley's song, Never Gonna Give You Up. And Chainmails are messages sent to a number of people telling the recipient to forward on the message to other people. It gets pretty spammy, but no actual harm is done. The two are both small, lighthearted forms of internet deception, just like satirical articles. So yeah, those are definitely a few of the harmless deceptions that help us build up an awareness about this culture of lying on the internet that we have to be very careful of. In a way, internet deception kind of hazes us. It trains us to look before we leap, a valuable lesson that we could take outside the digital realm. I mean, millennials are so used to instant gratification that we're, they're willing to take the first result they see on Google regardless of who it's from. They need to learn. Yes. Yes, you can click on this. Yes, you can get something. But when we trust blindly, we risk compromising our own livelihoods. So next time you get rickrolled, take something away from it. Build up a little bit of skepticism. Recognize your own naivety. Because by building these straits, you're building good habits, both on the internet and off.